Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I am going to show you how to make nine layer tags using up some scraps. So let's get started. Here's a list of what you'll need and I'll show you as we go along. My base layer is Tim Holtz Distress Tags. These are the medium size ones. I use some packaging from some Tim Holtz Ideology paper dolls, I think. I use some Stamperia um, papers. Sorry, that was not in focus. I used some pieces of a collage that I made just on some cardstock. And I had some little tags. I don't know where they came from, but I used that as a template for that very top smallest tag that I cut out of that collage material. And then I used just some cardstock that I had coffee dyed, some book pages. There's a digital download. There's the scrapbook paper and the distress tag. I also used a grommet on one of the bundles of nine tags. I added some washi tape. That's Tim Holtz washi tape. And there it is. It comes in a tube. I think you get like eight different pieces or patterns. I used my crocodile to set the eyelet and also to punch the holes through all of the tags. Those are the eyelets. I think they're 3 16th size eyelets or grommets rather, sorry. And then I have coffee dyed some string and pulled those little reinforcers off of the tags. I used walnut stain and vintage photo distress ink to distress all the papers and my Tombow multi-liquid glue um, just to glue those little reinforcements back on top. So I have that one bundle done and I have two more that I have all cut out and I've already distressed the edges of the big tag and added some washi tape and ink the edges and then I've inked the edges of all the rest of the tags and I just cut the tags in kind of graduating sizes so you see little bits of each one as they stack on top of each other I guess I hadn't inked that stack yet that's the coffee dyed cardstock that's another piece of cardstock that I just stamped along the bottom edge Another piece of scrapbook paper that I inked, and that's the piece that I cut from the, yep, from that collage paper that I made. So I have just nine tags cut in graduating sizes, and I'm just going to stack them up. Now I guess I'm going to ink the edges. I'm just going to fly, fly you through this because you don't need to watch me do all that. You know how to ink the edges of your paper. I did ink the, both the front and the back of each of the tags. If I was going to do this again, I think I would probably put a backing of cardstock or something on that piece of book paper because it's pretty thin. And also the packaging just to cover up the um, writing and advertising or whatever on the back of the packaging piece. So then I'm just going to stack them all together. And if you don't get them all cut just exactly right when you stack them up, um, you just kind of have to adjust so that a little bit of each of the preceding papers show when you stack them. Mine were a little off, so I just kind of shifted them until they were where I wanted them. No big deal. If you're real, real, and sorry, this is this stacking process is totally out of frame. I was kind of intent on what I was doing, I guess, and not paying a lot of attention. I'm really sorry. 
You get the idea, though. It's not rocket science. Just stack them up. I turned them upside down. I felt that that was a little bit easier to get those top edges lined up and held in place. So that did help. And then I could just kind of adjust as I went. I was having a little bit of trouble getting them where I wanted them, but since these are the grungy style, I guess, <clears throat> excuse me, I guess it doesn't really matter. So I'm just showing you I'm going to use the crocodile through that back hole of the distress tag that's already punched, so it makes it real easy to get it lined up kind of a thick stack so it took me a little bit of effort to get it over that reinforcement piece but once I got it over it punched through really easy and that's basically it you guys and then you just um, put your grommet or your reinforcement or whatever you want to put on there I forgot to it's easier if you put the little, that little reinforcement piece back on I took it off of the coffee dyed tag so I could attach it to that top smaller tag. So that's why I just used a little bit of my Tombow glue to attach that. If you do that before you punch the hole then you don't have to worry about disturbing your stack. And I'm just wiping up that little bit of glue that I got on my mat so that I didn't accidentally sit my paper in it. And then I had saved the string that also came off of the coffee dyed tag because it was nice and dark and grungy. And again, out of frame, but I'm just sticking it through the holes. There it is. So I stuck it through and then I think I grabbed a stylus. But anything you can use, a pencil, anything, just to poke it the rest of the way through so you can grab it on the other side. And string them up. And that's basically it, you guys. Um, just a great way to use up scraps. I have a ton of them. I'm going to share with you uh, what I did with all of my scraps before I got started on this. That was my inspiration of what am I going to do with these scraps. So I know I had shared with you a while back my bin that was just overflowing with scraps. So I decided it was time to sort them. So here's some of the piles I created. And I kind of put them in piles that I could manage. And in the bottom of that bin were all these cool antique German paper scraps. I have a ton of them, just a ton of them. They came from Europe, so there were fairies and flowers, and I'm just showing you. There's butterflies, flowers, Santas, little fairy, garden fairies. There's the, I have one of those cool angels. She's probably eight inches tall, really nice. And then I also ran across a couple of old tin types that I'll probably scan, a copy a scan. That's a scan of a postcard. Um, a man with a trombone that I cut out of a magazine. This cool picture of some vintage women in bathing suits in front of an airplane, I don't know. Uh, Monticello Junior High School Choir. And there's more paper scraps, more Santas. And there's some Easter bunnies, more flowers. So if anybody would like to buy some paper scraps, they're original. German paper scraps. Let me know and I'll let you know what I have. 
I think there's some on my website too. There's a link in my description box below. So that was just my big tray of tea dyed book pages, vintage stuff that I use all the time. So that went back in the tray because then I'll pull from there. These are um, jelly prints. You can tell I like turquoise. There's some on paper, some on um, deli paper, watercolor paper, pieces, parts. Um, there's some wipe up papers there. That's an alcohol ink piece. But I just put those all kind of in similar color piles. So I can pull from there too and I'll put those in a folder I suppose. Big pieces, little pieces. This was all in that blue tray. Everything I've showed you so far and I'm going to show you was all just heaped in that blue tray. This is kind of my blue pile, so I found that tag. Um, there's just some pieces of napkins, some more alcohol ink pieces. There's some jelly print pieces in there. That's um, that right there is napkin on music paper, little scraps, some tissue paper with ink on it, more jelly pieces, napkin. I think most of the rest of these are from the jelly plate. So oh, that's a rubbing. That's jelly plate on book paper with a stencil. Anybody need scraps? This is just a portion. This is just what was like left over and got thrown in the tray. I have file folders full of more stuff. Those turned out cool. I used a rubber stamp on the jelly plate so I like that. That one was through a stencil. So that's kind of my pink, purple, blue pile. And then I think there's a black and white pile. That might be what I, yeah, this was like words and I printed those sayings out on some tissue paper. That was just a cool graphic something or other that I saw online and I printed out. Um, but this pile I just kind of put more white, black and white, just plain white. Um, so I can pull from that. There's some doilies. Some old newspaper prints. Some chickens that Karen Bradley sent me. Thanks Karen. She's so good to me. She's always sending me cool stuff. I think this paper came from Leslie Cox in some happy mail. I'm not sure who sent me the newspaper. It's not my newspaper. I don't get the newspaper. But anyways, that was sort of my black and white pile that can go in a folder. I find though when I put stuff in folders, I don't pull them out as often as I do when there's just open in a tray that I can just grab from. These things were all prints from my um, digital download packs. So I have the French receipts. There was just a bunch of little, that's a scan of one of my early art journal pages. More stuff from the digital download pack. I love those French receipts though. There's so many cool little pieces on there that you can just tear up and use. But all of this is from, that's the header paper, the vintage paper digital pack. Those are available on my website. These are the little foldable envelope downloads you can get on my website. There's another cool piece of paper from Karen Bradley. So this stuff was just all piled. So it's good to get it sorted. I bent those. 
Those are more of those little foldable envelope downloads from my website, which are fun to stick on your journal pages. That's one of my digital pack papers that you can use to either make journal pages with or use pieces of. That I'm not sure. I know I downloaded that online. I think the rest of these all came from the um, New York Library Digital, New York Digital Library. They're all copyright free. They're all copies of antique or scans of antique papers. Those I love. I need to use those somewhere. So I think that is all there well I'm not sure I think that's all the piles anyways so at least they're sorted I can put them in folders where they belong and I may never see them again because like I said I don't like pulling folders out I just don't think of it I always go to that tray but it was getting to the point where there was so much in there that I couldn't even find what I thought I might have been looking for so now it's more manageable the tray is all just kind of vintagey looking pieces parts that I can pull from <clears throat> and that's what I use most often so that's why I left those pieces in the tray so I'm sure you guys can all relate oh, I'm just showing you that's a piece of alcohol ink art that I made the other day I was just messing around was sitting on my on my table so figured I'd show you that while I was showing you all this other stuff so do you have piles and piles of paper scraps this is the the last few things that I just saved from going in the trash just packaging so a little black box that I thought maybe I could make use of pieces from coffee that's the inner seal from a jo new jar of texture paste I think but when I pulled it off it's like oh that's kind of cool looks like a big moon I'll save that so it's almost Halloween I probably should use it just punched out waist clothing tags those are always good if you want a base for a little tag and then my daughter sent me gum it was a little like chiclets gum and it says I need more power and money and less shit from you people <laughs> she knows me so I thought I'll save that it's the same thing on both sides so I'll probably end up using that somewhere on a funny journal page so I just have that basket and Every once in a while I just throw stuff in there so it doesn't get thrown out in the garbage. And then every now and then I'll just go through it and it's like, yeah, I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to use that. So some of it ends up in the garbage anyways. Oh, this was the paper that my Bare Minerals um, makeup order was wrapped in. And I used it to cover that little journal that I'm using for my napkin art. But there was a bunch more in there, so I definitely saved that. That I will use because it's like in my color wheel. Um, and that was the hand lettered envelope that I got from three fish, three purple fish um, watercolor on Etsy. And now my camera's out of focus because. I tried to focus in on something up close and didn't refocus it. Sorry about that. I so that was my day. Um, took me forever to sort through those piles, you guys. But at least these little tags came out really cool. And I was inspired to start using up some of those scraps that I threw back in my tray. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it out for me. I'd appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do that. Come back and see what else I have in store for you. And in the meantime, go make some art. Bye.